Hey guys, what's happening? Geeky Guy Comics here. New comic book day, week 51. This is Geeky Guy Comics Read and Reviews. So basically what we do here is I read and review the new comic books that came out that day. I give my reviews on it. I'll try them. I'll try for them not to be um, contain any spoilers. Some of them might, so please accept my apologies. Uh, if you do think there's a spoiler coming up, hit the mute button or skip past or put your fingers in your ears. Um, first things first, you might notice that I'm wearing a Geeky Guy Comics hoodie. I got these fresh today. There's the logo here on the left chest panel. And then I've also got there's a massive logo on the back. If you are interested in these, uh, hey, Perry, how you doing, man? This is the first time I'm doing a live video. So you can give me some tips. You can message me some tips and let me know what I'm going wrong. I try to um, do it on my phone, but for some reason I've got to do it on some grainy uh, iMac camera. So I was just talking about I've got some new uh, new merchandise today. got the hoodies. It's literally just a standard hoodie with the, uh, with the pockets. And if you're interested in these, I'm working out the prices. Uh, just let me know. Um, yeah, so Geeky Guy Comics reading reviews, week 51 for new comic book day. So I'm just going to jump straight in. We had Basket Full of Heads number three this week. This comic has been absolutely amazing from number one to number three, where it is now. Joe Hill and Leo Max working superbly together. The artwork, the writing styles of both of these two is absolutely sublime. It's clear to see that they've got an amazing partnership. And I'll tell you what, if this story carries on the way it is and this partnership carries on the way it is this story is clearly going to go to the ending that they have betrayed and they they, they clearly want to do it's a massive massive comic I'm, i wasn't really a fa uh, i wasn't really a fan of of horror comics joe hill has totally changed my opinion on that since he started working with dc black label second to none mate this i mean dc black label's been massive this year with the likes of harleen with the likes of batman with the likes of joker killer smile it's all been kicking off and uh to have joe hill working with him now is definitely i think he's brought the horror genre definitely up people are more interested in it now so if you haven't read basket for the heads it basically tells a story of a, a a group of criminals that have broken into this house they're after something it tells the story of liam and june a boyfriend and girlfriend that work on this uh, uh amity not amity island is it, is it rhode island i think they work on a small little rhode island in america they're working it's coming up to spring break they're looking to get a couple of weeks off they go to uh to mr clausen's house who's who's like the chief inspector of the police they go there for dinner it all kicks off the house gets broken into people go missing june starts hiding comic one number comic one end done number two we find out a lot more about that so she's she's been hiding in the house everyone's gone she thinks she's free she comes out boom there's a killer there he ends up trying to kidnap her as well she runs away runs into one of the rooms smashes like this glass vitrine ends up pulling out this hatchet which then we find out is the hatchet that's on the comic uh, uh, on the comic um, face of number one so you're like hold on she's holding the hatchet could she? And then the penny dropped. Boom. She could potentially be the killer, the person that's carrying around the basket full of heads. Like, how the hell? So then, obviously, the comic goes on. She's running away from this criminal. She ends up getting in a fight with him, cuts off his toes. Albeit, they have a massive fight on the beach or down at the pier just away from the house. She ends up cutting off his head. You think that's it done. The head's rolling. The body's rolling in the sea. The head's getting splashed around with the waves. And then all of a sudden, the head's still talking. You're like, what? The head's still talking. June's thinking, what the hell? The geezer who's had his head cut off is still thinking, what the hell? She picks it up, puts him down, looks around, and then all of a sudden, down the stairs where they were just fighting, there's a basket full of little toys. So she thinks, well, what am I going to do? Instead of doing the normal thing and thinking, running off and thinking, oh my God, there's a head with nobody that's talking to me, she does the second sensible thing in the situation and picks up the head and puts it in a basket. Now, for me, I was like, Okay, let's let's just let's just roll with it. Puts it in basket full of heads. She puts on a yellow mat. She's carrying a hatchet. There we have it. The the person that was on the front of the first comic is June, the girlfriend. Basket full of heads. She's the killer. She's got a yellow mat. Basket with a head and a hatchet. Boom. Number two done. Number three. All hell breaks loose. This comic was fantastic. The twists, the turns, the artwork, the storyline absolutely amazing we kind of follow on from number three uh, number two and i don't know what it's called like in america but over here it's like an outhouse so the story starts june and the head are in an outhouse they're sitting there talking it's kind of like they're kind of bonding in a roundabout weird way like this it's like a killer 
and a potential killer is bonding and yeah, it's really weird. So like I'm rolling with the story. I'm thinking, yeah, this is great. This is great. And then we also find out that the name of the talking head is called Sal. Sal Puzo is a, he's a member of this, this gang. He's a low life criminal. The rest of the the, the criminals that are in this gang, they've killed people. They've kidnapped people. They've pimped people out. He literally just, 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 um, sells a couple of, couple of drugs now and again um so as the bonding continues i, I didn't really like this part of just like bonding a bit too much i thought it was like a story of how they're going to find themselves um it kind of starts getting a bit more involved when we find out that liam isn't potentially the person that we thought he was he's not he's not this young naive policeman he's actually uh, he's actually quite smart. He's quite savvy. And according to Sal, the reason why that they kidnapped him is because a few uh, a few months or a while back, a girl jumped off the bridge uh, with a rucksack full of rocks trying to kill herself, but she also had a rucksack full of money. Um, and when the um, the gang that were out on day release, I guess over in the UK, it's called Community Service, where you do work for the community while you're still in prison. In the States, I'm not sure what it's called. Maybe Perry, you can help me out with this, but they're doing all this work and uh, they stumble across this girl and they stumble across the rocks and the money. And then we find out that potentially Liam has taken the money because he starts flaunting it a bit. He starts getting a bit cocky. He rocks up in a new car, rocks up in a new pair of sunglasses. So everyone's like, hmm, okay. And then the penny drops that you realise that they burgled, they, the escaped convicts got to the house and burgled the house because... They knew Liam was going to be there and they know something that we didn't. He has the money. So they kidnap him to find out where the money is. So June and him are talking about that. She doesn't believe it. She's adamant that he wouldn't do that. He's not that type of guy. But then we also find out that if he is that guy, June's thinking about it. She's like, hold on. He didn't have no money. Then all of a sudden he's riding around in a new car. Like, mm, yeah, the, so it starts to drop. So anyway, she needs to think. She feels really guilty for cutting off uh, this Sal guy's head. Uh, hold on just a moment. She feels really guilty for cutting off this Sal guy's head. Um, and they're walking to find somewhere. They're trying to get to the police station. And as they're walking to the police station, they bump into like a local resident. I think his name's Mr. Hamilton. He pulls up in his car, lights flashing. She puts the, the head in the basket down and walks up to Mr. Hamilton with a hatchet. I mean, if that was me, as soon as someone gives some woman or man or anyone coming up to me with a hatchet and a yellow mac on in the absolute pissing down of rain, I'm going to be first things first. One, I'm not getting out of the car. And two, I'm reversing the car and going back the other way. This bloke, don't do that at all. He notices June. He's like, oh, well, what's, what's the matter? What's the matter? She says, the house has been broken into. We need to get to the police station. Is it okay to give me a lift? In a roundabout way, he turns around and says, yep, do you know what? I'll give you a lift. So they're on their way, they're driving down, driving down there to the police station. All of a sudden, a tree falls down in the middle of the road. June kind of becomes like the incredible Hulk and is like, I don't know, let's just get out and try and move this car. Didn't happen. Move the car, uh, move the tree trunk. So they try and get out. They're trying to push this tree trunk. It isn't going to happen. She decides that she's going to get her hatchet and break, uh, start smashing at the tree, breaking into smaller pieces. As she does that, Mr. Hamilton walks to the back of the car, obviously trying to get another tool to help her out. As he goes to the back of the car, he sees the basket uh, with the head in it that June had just put in there. He's kind of all freaked out about it. And you just see a clip, a picture of a chain, like a mass, I'm talking like a massive chain. And the next thing you know, June's hacking away at this thing, hacking away at this thing. And she puts her hands in his pockets. And she's like, yeah, Mr. Hamilton, I'm finished now. Puts her hands in his pockets that she's borrowed from Mr. Hamilton because she was cold. And she just pulls out his like wire clippers. And then there's a really cool flashback in the comic of Sal the Talking Head saying to June, yeah, well, we only cut off your boyfriend's fingers because we should have really cut off his... And then the penny drops, she's like, well, hold on. Why would Mr. Hamilton have the wire clippers in his coat? Before you know it, she turns around and says, Mr. Hamilton, smack right in the back of the head. She falls down. He's hammering away at her with his chain. And then we kind of find out that he's not all he seems to be either. He's probably part of this gang. He's trying to kill her because she's some psycho bitch. And then the comic ends. Then it ends. This comic, I tell you what, from start to finish was amazing. There was a bit in the middle. A tiny bit in the middle where I was like, well, this is like a brother and sister bonding session. It's pretty boring. But other than that, if you forget about that thing, absolutely amazing. For me, like the graphical content throughout this comic 
and the storyline and the way it's written, Joe Hill and Leo Max have got an absolutely amazing partnership. And it's seriously, it's clear to see that they, the projected ending that they see in line for this comic is definitely going to get there. Um, so, yeah, Basket Full of Heads. If you haven't read it, go out and get it now. Read from one to number three. This is where we're at now. The story is great. The continuing story is going to be great. And I can't wait to see how it ends. Now, moving on to review number two, we've got Claws and the Life and Times of Joe Christmas. Now, if I'm honest, this doesn't really deserve a review. I was expecting more from it. It's basically, it's actually, it's not basically, it is 100% a picture book. There's no, there's no writing in it at all. There's no writing involved in it. It's a picture book from start to finish. Um, it tells the story of Joe Christmas and Claws and their adventures over 25 pages. So it's, it's like a advent calendar. Um, and the, the manner that it's been shot is that it's, if you, if you can understand where I'm coming from, it's a reverse timeline comic. So the beginning of it is actually the end, and the end is actually the beginning. So if you think about reading a comic from the back to the front, you'll get where I'm coming from. Um, it's, the timeline ranges from 1930 to 2001, and the way that it's been written, so the artist for this was Dan Mora. He's the, he's the artist that... Um, did Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Superb artwork. There's absolutely nothing wrong with the artwork because that's all there is. Um, there's nothing more to this comic than the, the fantastic artwork. And what I found really interesting was that the way that it was drawn fit perfectly with the year it was meant to be in. So uh, one of the pages, 1930, it's very grainy, it's very dark, it's fine line, um, fine line uh, pen work. But then when we get to 2001, it's full of colour, bold, striking pen work. It's absolutely amazing. Other than that, there's nothing more I can say about this comic. It's a picture book. If you want to see a picture book, if you want a festive picture book to look at for 25 pages, Crack On With Claws and Joe Christmas uh, and Life and Times of Joe Christmas. Number three on the Geeky Guys pull list was Family Tree number two. Now, for me, Family Tree number one was so out there. I was like, am I even going to bother reading this comic? And then when I see it was by Jeff Lemire, I had to. Now, anyone who knows about Jeff Lemire, the way that he writes about family problems, the way that he writes about family environment and the personal environment, you'd be stupid not to pick up this comic. So number one, if you haven't read it, let me give a brief overview of that. Number one, there's a single mum. She's got two kids. One of the kids is at school. She gets called to the school because he's causing problems. He's causing hassle. She takes him out of the school. She goes home. Her daughter's in the back of the car. She starts moaning about an itch. She's got a rash. She pulls up her sleeve. There's a tiny little rash there. By the time they get home, the daughter's moaning and moaning and moaning about this rash. It's getting bigger. She's itching all over now. They pull up her t-shirt they find out she's got branches coming out of her back first thing they do is jump in the car they drive on their way to they drive into the doctors on their way to drive to the doctors um they get stopped the car and the, where they are gets overtaken by these random people that just start shooting at her and everything they're trying to protect this baby they're trying to kidnap the kids the mum's trying to pull them back she's hiding all of a sudden out of nowhere this big mass beast of a guy starts shooting all these people then we find out that that is the girl's granddad. That is Meg's granddad. Comic ends. Number two starts off directly from that. So we find out in this issue, we find out a lot more about, um, we find out a lot more about the granddad. We find out that his name's Judd. We also find out that um, issue one ended, the way issue one ended transcends into the way that issue two starts. So issue two starts with a flashback um, of how we find out about granddad. And we also find out about someone called Pup that had the same, um, he had the same condition as, as the girl Meg. We also find out that Pup is Meg's dad and the condition that he had is obviously hereditary because it's been passed on to her. Um, what else? This the, the this issue focuses on um, making sure making sure that he can get Meg to the hospital to get the cure that she wants. Her mum's really not sure about. It. Her mum's really not happy about. It doesn't trust doesn't trust Judd, the granddad. Now we don't really know much about why he doesn't trust her. All we know is that her husband, his son, went off. He either went off or he died or anything like that. We find out at the start of number two what happened to him. I don't think the mum really knows about that. Um, but yeah, while she's um, 
I'm just looking at my notes. The issue focuses on Judd, making sure that he can get Meg to the hospital, protecting her from the strangers that have attacked him in issue one. So this is all about the family coming together, the granddad trying to save the day from these random killers that are showing up. I don't know why they're interested in the people that can turn into trees. I wouldn't be really interested. I would run an absolute mile. Um, the artwork, for me, the artwork at times was quite, the story and the artwork at times was quite all over the place. Um, it was quite dark. It was quite grainy. I found myself squinting at certain pages and thinking, I can't really get through this comic. I'm really going to struggle to get through this comic. So I can see if other people just switch off and can't be bothered to read this comic, I, was, I would be totally the same. It's only because I followed it through and I could see the light at the end of the tunnel that I wanted to read it. There is a twist at the end. And I thought it was very, very interesting. If you can get past some of the pages where it's really dark, it's really hard to, to understand what's going on. It's really hard to look at the content. If you can get past that, there's a twist at the end. It's quite very, not quite, it is very, very interesting. And for me, I'm excited to see how that is portrayed in the um, upcoming issues. It's, it's a great comic overall. I can't moan about that, but I think the artwork is a lot to be desired for. There's, some pages you're okay with, some pages are quite dark. But yeah, overall, Geeky Guy comics, I'd give this a free, I'd give this a free Geeky Guys rating. Now, finally, we have Suicide Squad number one. So obviously, I think we're on about issue volume nine now. There's there's quite a few out there. And this, I thought this would have come out early next year with the start of the new Suicide Squad movie, but it's out now. Not gonna moan. Absolutely loved it. It's yet again, we are still focusing on the Task Force X, uh, the Suicide Squad, but this time it's consistent of we've got Harley Quinn and Deadshot who seem to be the um, who seem to be like the leaders of the new of the new uh, era of um, Suicide Squad. We've got Harley Quinn, we've got Deadshot, we've got the Shark, we've got Zebra Man. <laughs> I mean, some of these names I was like, have you, have you just made this up? We've got Zebra Man. We've got the Magpie. We've got Cavalier. We've got who else have we got? We've got the shark, I think I already seen him. And even in the words of Harley Quinn and Deadshot, it's the worst squad put together. Honestly, if you look at it, you're like, wow, this is going to be a week. This is going to be like, I'm interested. I want to see what these new people can bring to the team. But Harley Quinn and Deadshot really ain't sure. Um, they're still having to do the dirty work for the government. They're still having to do the dirty work for Amanda Waller. We're introduced to this new character to, called Locke. Um, this is a bit of an arse, if I'm honest. Um, but yeah, they're still trying to do, they still have to do the um, the dirty work for the government. Yet again, they've still got the bombs in their brain. So if they want to go against anything uh, that, that's been said, it's uh, the bombs are going to go off. Um, and they're still working towards like a reduced sentence. So every good that they do, they reduces their sentence. Um, this time round, though, the team are pitted up a against a new group of super powered terrorists called the Revolutionaries. Now, if I'm going to be honest, they seem amazing. Like the Revolutionaries, they're kind of like a cross between X Men and the Marauders and the Avengers, they're, these are, they're badasses, they are badasses, like, from what they've done from the start of the comic, pff, Suicide Squad ain't got a clue, like, I don't know what, like, these new geezers that are in now, I can't see what, anything, what they're going to do towards these new, um, these new terrorists, but, I mean, because they're ranging from, like, transporters to, um, telekinetics to, like, even, they've even got a human bomb, um, and, the Suicide Squad has only been put forward to this because the Justin League were like, we don't want to know, like, we ain't going nowhere near that, so, yep, Suicide Squad have been put forward to this. I've got to say, though, like, I didn't even know anything about the shark before this comic. And I'll tell you what, he is a badass. His first scene, his first proper scene where you see and he bursts onto the scene, whoo, 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 it's epic. And it's so clear to see that he really doesn't like Atlanteans. It's, it's clear. It's really clear to see. And you'll understand what I mean when you have a look at his comic. Now, the characters in it, yeah, they are pretty weak, and it's clear to see that they're not as good as the original Suicide Squad. Um, but obviously, time moves on, and I think, yeah, this has moved on as well. Maybe not in the right direction. Amanda Waller's been sacked, or she's stepped down. This new guy, Locke's taken on. He's a bit of a dick, if I'm honest. He is a bit of a dick. Um, <laughs> we find out that, uh, as the story goes on, we find out that the Suicide Squad weren't really sent to um, to kill these new group of terrorists, they was actually sent to recruit them. Boom! Spoiler! 
I was actually sent to recruit them, and half of the uh, half of the team of the Suicide Squad, that like the Zebra Man and Cavalier, they've been killed by them already. So we're like, hold on, like, what is this lock got up his sleeve? So we find out Amanda Waller's left, found out this lock's taken over, and then next thing we know, we find out that they're not even sent to kill the revolutionaries. They're sent to recruit them for what seems like this ultimate Suicide Squad that this lock geese is putting together. Because I think his end line is. If I'm going to have a uh, suicide squad, I'm going to have a suicide squad that's going to be the best in the world. That's it. I can't wait to see what happens in the next review. Like these comments, are, I'm really tired, man. Like these these comments, the comments that have come out this week are amazing. Not going to lie, absolutely superb. If you've liked this video, please let me know. If you think it's absolutely rubbish, also let me know. All criticism is good criticism to me because I can only improve. If you like the stuff, if you like these jumpers, let me know. You can get your hands on the Geeky Guys merchandise. I've got t-shirts coming. I've got caps coming. More hoodies in a range of colours. Let me know, guys. Thanks for checking in, Perry Comics. Thanks for checking in, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure just talking to you. If I've been rambling a bit, it's my first live video. I'm getting used to it. I'm reading off of my notes. Going to try and get more professional. I've normally got my logo in the background, but as I said, week 51 was a massive, massive week for comics. I was only able to cover a few. I was trying to do them without the spoilers, just so I didn't touch on anything that uh, sensitive that you guys hadn't read already yet. Love it. If you like my, my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you comment. Make sure you give me feedback. Guys, if there's anyone out there, that wants to tell me what they want to see from my videos, let me know. You're an amazing community, guys, and I'll see you soon.